It's Don here from the board. Thanks for coming along and checking out this video. So you would have seen in the previous video that I had played around with the concept of conductive glue. And I mentioned at the end of that video that there might be opportunity to use it to actually do something with keyboards. And that's exactly what I tried to do. Uh, so as you will see, the question that I posed is, can you hand wire something with conductive glue? And that's what we're going to show you today. So, let's switch over to the desktop. Now, as a quick recap, previously I tried to uh, use conductive glue for a switch and I found out that I needed a ratio of graphite powder to PVA glue at a ratio of greater than 1.5 graphite to PVA and the conductive testing showed that the greater than 1.5 worked consistently uh, and what that led me to was mixing uh, a whole batch of it I used one of these uh, takeaway sauce containers and a, and a paddle pop stick and you know I mixed it up uh, to try and work with and it turns into a really lumpy mess uh, it's very watery and at 1.5 Five, it's very fluid. It moves everywhere. One point greater than 1.5 towards the two mark, it starts to get lumpy. So I think finding a good ratio is really challenging. I actually put it into one of these um, disposables, these disposable syringe types, to see if I could dose it out of here as well. And that didn't really work for me very well. Um, and you know, I tried to tape stuff so I could glue it, and that didn't go so well. And in the end, I just stuck it into a small Ziploc like this, as you can see. Uh, and this is actually still wet. And you can see what I mean in that it is very much like a, uh, a sludge form factor here. And I used dental picks that I have from my sculpting time when I did artisans to apply it. So I'd grab a blob out of this and then I'd put it and try and shape it and push the the blob of conductive solder glue, uh, conductive glue really, into the actual joint that I was trying to achieve. Yes dear? When we were walking you saw fluttery butterflies. You saw fluttery butterflies? Okay. Alright. Have you finished your yogurt? Yes. Go and finish your yogurt. Okay. So uh, with that interlude out of the way, I want to present this monstrosity. Uh, so I was trying to do a numpad for my brother-in-law that he had a particular layout that he wanted. And I thought, you know what? This should work. There's no reason why this wouldn't work. And then I was like, I'm going to do this 100% without solder. No soldering whatsoever. And boy, was that a mistake. <laughs> I hot glued the switches into the 3D printed housing and then I went to town. So what you can see here is I've got diodes that have been conductively glued with this graphite PVA mixture to the pins and then in between each pin I've used conductive glue for the columns and for the rows. I've had to use just masking tape to stop shorting and normal PVA glue to insulate certain points. And then I also used conductive glue for the actual joins of the wires, uh, for example over here, to the Pro Micro. But you see, it doesn't end there because I got stumped on how can I not use solder to connect to the Pro Micro. The actual Pro Micro uh, pads are too small for me to effectively put a wire through and use this slurry without possibly shorting. So my solution was to put diode legs through it and twist them like a twist tie until they were hard crimped against the pads and then apply the conductive paste to those twist ties. And then I wrapped it with masking tape and then I put down normal PVA glue to act as insulation to stop them from moving and potentially shorting out in other places. Does it look horrible and disgusting? 
Yes, it does. Biggest question is, does it work? And the answer is, kind of. It kind of works. Now, when I did this, I was testing it with my multimeter periodically, all the way through. When I did the diode legs twist tie crimping, they all worked. When I put the glue down, I couldn't test it because the glue was still wet. The conductive glue was still wet. And I had no choice but to complete what I was doing and then just wait. And, well, let's see what the end result is because I'm going to plug this in now. Uh, so we got power. The, the Pro Micro is lit up. And I'm going to switch over to... There we go, there is switch header. Now, uh, you're going to see just here on the off side that I'm going to start pressing a switch. Oh, hey, look. That key doesn't do anything. That key doesn't do anything. That key is not doing anything. That key is doing something. So is that one. So is that one. That one doesn't do anything. That one does. Um, so... I'm going to say it kind of works because the theory is sound. It's the execution <laughs> that's what's letting me down here. The amount of care and trouble and effort that I went to to actually putting these together, right, was pretty haphazard. I I'm going to be willing to admit that because who is harebrained enough to build something like this using PVA and graphite mixed together into a horrible, lumpy, sludgy mess. I tried to do it at a lower ratio, but it was too fluid. It was just running everywhere. It would fall off the joints, the glue wouldn't dry at a rate that would hold it, and if there was more glue than graphite powder, it wasn't conductive enough. You know, I've got all these diodes here that are evident of that failure. Uh, and what I end up doing with that higher ratio to make it work just made it really hard to work with the graphite uh, being so lumpy and clumpy. But I persevered and I have almost two thirds of a working numpad completely built with zero solder and zero soldering iron tools. It's all glue, it's all tape um, and a glue gun. Now, you could probably get away with not using a glue gun and just using PVA. It would just be longer to cure, but I just went with the glue gun because it was just easier. Just a standard hot glue gun that everybody hates from the r slash DIY uh, subreddit. So, proof of concept wise, uh, you could do it. You, you really could pull this off. I think the execution is obviously what let me down. And part of that issue with the execution is the consistency of this conductive glue. If somebody was able to do a bit more experimentation with mixing ratios, maybe a different glue medium and not PVA or a different grade of PVA because you can get like thinner and thicker PVAs because I think it's a concentration water content issue. Um, then you might have much better success. If you were able to take a bit more care and utilize your tools a bit better, because I'm professing that I didn't do that very well, you might be able to crimp your wires onto the Pro Micro better and cleaner. Because the matrix, technically it worked. I think where I'm failing on those switches that weren't registering in switch header just then, it's actually probably failure at the Pro Micro more than anything else. Now, as far as an experiment goes, Sure, I've blown a bit of money on some some box royals and I've blown a little bit of money on this Pro Micro. Um, but why do I do this? So you don't have to do this. And if you were ever wondering, then this answers it for you. Now, if you're a glutton for punishment because this was really painful to work on, uh, if you heard my podcasts in the last couple of weeks, I kind of touched briefly on it because... This is what I was talking about. Doing 
one section waiting for it to dry, coming back to it, trying to do another section, and then watching one of the joints break off because this conductive glue can be really brittle was just like, oh, you know, and that's why you see some of these are massive lumps because it was just like, get in there, get on there, stay on there, and when you dry, be strong enough not to break off again. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I didn't lose sleep over this, but unless if you're completely out of things to experiment on keyboards, don't hand wire with homemade graphite PVA conductive glue. So there you have it. Proof of concept, yes. Execution wasn't great. If someone's game and wants to take that further and work on it, develop on it, experiment on it, then by all means, go for it. And then we might see another generation of people who are going to be building boards without solder. How cool would that be? How cool would that be? Maybe it would be useful for SMD components because then you don't have to have a hot air soldering station. You could just apply graphite paste glue to your pads with a silk, uh, sorry, with a, a screen thing, a mask, a solder mask, right? And then you could just drop your components on it and then just let it naturally air dry and then bam, your SMD components are good. Maybe. Um, am I going to try that experimentally? I don't know. Well, we'll see how that goes. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video and the fact that I'm going out there and doing some pretty wacky things, that I would really appreciate that like button being pressed. Uh, and of course, if you want to see more of this kind of wacky stuff over the, the life of this channel, then of course, please hit that subscribe button. And there's always that notification bell if you want to get notified on whenever the next video comes along. So thanks for bearing through this, uh, and yeah, as always, until next time, happy clacking.